Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain the American drama thriller film called Us. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It is 1896 in Santa Cruz. Addie is out with her parents at a carnival at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. She looks around the carnival, noticing various activities going around her. Her mother is going to the bathroom, while her father is playing a game. Addie is left unattended, so she wanders off to look around. First, she goes to a beach by the carnival, then she enters a funhouse. The lights suddenly go out, and Addie is stuck in a house of mirrors. Suddenly, she encounters her doppelganger. Cut to the present day, a family of four drives to Santa Cruz, California. Addie is now all grown up, and is the mother of two kids, Zora and Jason. After hours of journey, they arrive at Addie's childhood home in Santa Cruz. At lunch, Gabe Wilson, her husband, insists on going to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk that night for fun. Addie remembers to this day what that night at the fun house had done to her. She is haunted by memories of the encounter and her recovery, during which she stopped speaking for a while. She doesn't want to go there again, but Gabe successfully persuades her. The family then drives to the beach. On their way to the beach, they are having fun in their car. Zora makes fun of Jason's magic fire ring. At one point, they witness paramedics taking away a body of an old man, with blood on his chest. As they arrive at the beach, they meet their friends, Josh Tyler, Kitty Tyler, and their twin daughters. As the two families are relaxing, Jason goes to the bathroom. While returning, he is shocked to see a man who looks similar to the dead man they had seen earlier. Addie notices Jason missing and gets very scared. When she finally finds Jason, they decide to return home. At night, Addie tells Gabe about her encounter with her doppelganger when she was young. However, Gabe doesn't seem to believe her. As they talk, the lights go out. Suddenly, Jason arrives and tells his parents about a family standing in their driveway. They look through the window and see a family of four standing there. Zora comes out too. Addie freaks out and calls the police, as Gabe goes out to tell them to go away. But the family doesn't answer, and just stands there. Gabe takes a baseball bat and goes out again. This time, they start walking towards him. He feels threatened, so he comes inside and locks the doors. However, the people outside find a hidden key and come inside. The family is surprised to notice that the intruders are their doppelgangers. They corner the family in their own living room, threatening them with scissors. They make them sit in front of them. Jason's doppelganger is Pluto, who loves fire. Zora's double is a sadist named Umbri, Gabe's double is Abraham, and the group leader seems to be Addie's double, named Red. She is the only one who can speak, and has a guttural and raspy voice. Red tells them that they are the Wilson family's shadow, and are called the Tethered. The Tethered share a soul with their look-alike counterparts and have been living as their shadows their whole life. But now, they have come to untether themselves. Red tells them a story about a girl and her shadow, referring to herself and Addie. While Addie ate good and warm food, Red had to eat raw-blooded rabbits. Addie was given soft toys to play with, while Red's toys were sharp and cold. Addie met Gabe, her loving prince, but Red had to marry Abraham because he was tethered to Gabe. Similarly, Addie gave birth to a loving daughter, Zora, but Red gave birth to a sadistic monster, Umbri. At last, she says that Addie had doctors to operate on her and help her birth, but Red had to do it all herself. Red has come to despise Addie and her perfect life. So, they have come out of the shadows to claim their life. After explaining, Red makes Addie handcuff herself to the table. Abraham drags Gabe away to the other room. Umbri chases Zora through the streets, while Pluto forces Jason to play with him. The intruder's plan is to separate the Wilsons, terrorize them, and kill them. Pluto and Jason are playing with fire in a tiny room, where Jason sees Pluto's scarred face for the first time. Zora is hunted down by Umbri. As she is about to stab her with a pair of scissors, a man stops her. Zora runs away as Umbri stabs the man to death. Meanwhile, Abraham hits Gabe, making him go unconscious. He then puts him in a garbage bag and into the boat. Gabe tears a tiny hole in the bag and notices the baseball bat beside Abraham. The boat suddenly stops. Taking this opportunity, Gabe comes out of the bag and hits Abraham with the bat, sending him into the water. But as the boat starts moving, Gabe falls in the water as well. Gabe sees the boat stop and climbs on top of it. Just then, Abraham attacks him from behind but he pushes him back to the water and kills him. Gabe then takes the boat towards the house. Meanwhile, Jason realizes that Pluto mirrors his actions. He distracts Pluto with his fire ring and manages to run out and lock him inside the room. Red hears the noise. 
She goes in and unlocks the door for Pluto. She looks around the house for Jason. Then, she finds Addy's old stuffed toy and cuts its head off. Addy is still cuffed to the table, but she notices a fireplace poker nearby. She manages to grab it and free herself of the cuffs. She then finds Jason and runs out of the house. They find Zora in their driveway. Gabe comes there with his boat at the right time. The family immediately gets on it and manages to escape. Elsewhere, the Tyler family is in their home when Kitty hears a noise. She tells Josh to check what it is. All of a sudden, their doppelgangers appear and kill the family within seconds. Just then, the Wilsons arrive there. Addie asks Josh's double for help. When he opens the door for her, she realizes that it isn't him, and hits him in the head with the fireplace poker. However, it does little to no harm to him. Others from inside, drag Addie in as well. Gabe and the kids are outside when imposter Josh walks towards them. The kids run away as Gabe runs in the opposite direction to divert Josh's attention. The kids then go inside the house to look for their mother. Zora picks a golf club as a weapon. As they hear Addie screaming from upstairs, they go up and see the twins' dead bodies lying on the floor. As the doppelganger twins play in the background. Suddenly, one of them appears in front of Zora. She hits her with the bat, making her fall down the railings. Next, they are attacked by the other twin. After a little fight, Zora kills her too. Kitty's double is in the bedroom where she has tied Addie to the bed. Meanwhile, Gabe runs to the boat and Josh follows him there. Gabe then shoots Josh with a flare gun and attacks him to death. Kitty sees Gabe killing Josh through the window. Just then, Zora attacks her from behind, but Kitty dodges it. She is about to stab Zora. But Jason saves her by hitting Kitty on her head. The Wilsons sit in the living room and try to comprehend the situation. The 911 lines are all busy. They look at the news and realize that this has been happening all around the country. The news says that the doppelgangers are coming out of the sewers with scissors as weapons. They are mindlessly stabbing people to death throughout the country. They see that the doubles are joining hands to form a massive human chain after they have killed their counterparts. It is as if they have been planning this for months. Since the whole country is in attack, Addie decides to drive along the coast and escape to Mexico. As the family gets into the car, Umbri appears in front of them. Zora tries to hit her with the car but Umbri jumps onto it. Zora then stops the car abruptly, sending her flying into a tree where she is impaled on a tree branch. The family then flees from the scene. They see several dead bodies on their way. They are stopped by a car burning in the middle of the road. Jason's double, Pluto, appears there. Addie goes out to fight him while the others stay in the car. Soon, Jason realizes that this is actually a trap. Pluto intends to ignite the family's car. He tells everyone else to get out of it. Before Pluto can light the match, Jason remembers that the doppelgangers mirror their movements, so he starts walking backward. This makes Pluto walk backward too. In the end, Pluto reaches the burning car and burns to death himself. But just then, Red comes out of her hiding and kidnaps Jason. Addie runs after them. She sees the long human chain of doppelgangers standing across the beach. She then reaches the place she had entered all those years earlier. She walks around it and finds a door that leads somewhere downstairs. A rabbit comes out of the door. She goes down and discovers a huge place. It looks like a secret establishment. She goes down an elevator and enters a huge hallway with several rooms on either side. Many rabbits run around the hallway. She finds red in one of the rooms that appear to be a classroom. The doppelganger human chain is drawn on the board. Addie asks her where her son is. But Red starts blabbering about how they are human as well. She then reveals the secret of their existence. Red explains that the tethered, also called the shadows, are actually artificial beings created by the government to control the originals on the surface for their own twisted purposes. The project aimed at creating clones that were connected to the people through their souls. The purpose of this project was to use the clones to control people like puppets all over America. But the experiments failed, and the tethered were abandoned underground for generations, mindlessly mimicking the actions of their counterparts and surviving on rabbit meat. That night, Faith had brought Red and Addie together. The other quickly realized that Red was different. So they selected her as their leader. They planned this for years. They wanted vengeance on their counterparts, but more than that, they wanted to create a statement of their existence. Hence, they decided to form the human chain. After Addie's encounter with Red, her parents had admitted her to a ballet dance class. So, Red used to mimic Addie and dance too. According to her, dancing was the reason that saved her. Then, they start to fight in the form of ballet. Red graciously dodges all of Addie's attacks. She has the upper hand in the fight. 
Red runs through the hallways, as Addie follows her with the fireplace poker in her hand. Their fight grows more and more intense, suddenly Red leaps at Addie with a pair of scissors from behind. But before she can get her, Addie stabs her with the fireplace poker, killing her. As Red is on the verge of death, she whistles the same tune Addie had heard the first time she met Red. This agitates Addie, so she strangles Red with her handcuffs, and kills her maniacally. She then finds Jason hiding inside a locker nearby. They both go outside, and find Gabe and Zora hiding inside an ambulance. The family then drives away in the same ambulance. As Addie drives, we see the flashback of the night she met Red. Addie was face to face with Red. Red suddenly choked her unconscious. She had then dragged her down to her room and handcuffed her to the bed. Red changed into Addie's clothes and took her place in real life. That night, Addie's parents took home their daughter's doppelganger. This explains why Red is the only tethered who could talk and thought differently, leading the revolt. Red's voice is damaged because her double choked her, damaging her larynx, and making her voice raspy and guttural. This also clarifies why Addie, as a child, wasn't able to talk after she was found at the beach. Shadows don't know how to speak. Over time, Addie's shadow learns to speak and becomes a regular person, capable of love and laughter, and forgets that she is a clone. The movie ends as we see a several miles long human chain formed by the doppelgangers. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.